Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today, coming to you from Washington, D.C. Congressman Stephen Horsford of CD4 here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. Compassion, accountability, integrity, respect. The Nevada Mining Association, mining a better future for Nevada and NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shan, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shan. Makers, we are delighted to welcome back to the program Congressman Stephen Horsford of CD4. Thank Absolute you. pleasure to see you, my friend. Always good to see you, Sam. Thanks for having me. Um, and you're looking great. You look Thank you. the picture <laughs> of health, which is. Well, I'm getting much grayer than I, I did back in the day, but uh, I've earned it, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm getting the grayer, but it's also disappearing, so that's <laughs> not really a good thing. So you're doing good. Um, you sit on the Armed Services Committee, and I wanted to start and, and a question that just kind of blew my mind as it all developed, which was this whole Afghanistan situation. You know, for so long we talked about 2,500, 3,500 troops being in Afghanistan. And when the evacuation came, suddenly we're talking over 100,000 people that were evacuated and then 100,000 or more people that we weren't able to get to. Were you aware that we really had that many troops in Afghanistan, plus contractors, plus affiliates? Well, to your point, uh, the the number of actual soldiers was one uh, set, but the uh, number of contractors, allies, and partners who have been there really over the course of 20 years. Um, and I want to start by, you know, commending President Biden uh, for making the hard but necessary decision to end the 20-year war, the longest war that the, the United States uh, was involved in. And it wasn't an easy decision uh, for him. Um, and no matter what, there was going to be difficult consequences to ending that war and getting people out. My office continues actually to work with the State Department and the Defense uh, Department to make sure that we continue to help uh, our Afghan allies and, and partners uh, who are there. But, you know, while this was happening, obviously it was a sense of urgency. Um, the Taliban uh, has taken control and, you know, the risk to uh, particularly women and girls was uh, especially troubling and, and something that uh, our committee and this Congress uh, takes seriously. I know we'll have other congressional hearings, but, you know, the president did the right thing in ending this war uh, in bringing our troops home and uh, making sure that any future decision uh, is not done and, and not taken lightly because it's a very serious uh, thing to ever uh, put our young men and women into harm's way. Couldn't agree with you more. And um, this wasn't even something that was just going to happen with the Biden administration. If uh, uh, Trump had been reelected, this was his plan was to remove us from this war as well. 
Um, well, there's four presidents when you really think of right. it since President Bush, uh, you know, went in. Um, and so each one of them made decisions, some good, some bad. Congress was a part of some of those decisions. Um, and But in the end, President Biden did the right thing by ending this war, by uh, bringing our sol soldiers home. And again, we remain vigilant in working with the State Department and, and the Defense Department to make sure that we continue to do our job. It's now moved from the military to a hum you know, humanitarian and State Department process, diplomatic process. Um, and so, you know, we'll continue to work uh, from that approach. As you talk to your colleagues and have been over the last few weeks, um, have there been any allusions to the Pentagon Papers where, you know, that was the, the, the report that came out into the New York Times eventually um, that said that the, the, none of the presidents who were involved in the Vietnam War wanted to be the president that uh, admitted that the United States had lost the war. Mm -hmm. And to an extent, there are parallels between that and Afghanistan. Uh, have your colleagues and you been talking about well, that at when, all? When we think back, right, in why we went uh, into Afghanistan, it, it was really about uh, getting Osama bin Laden, making sure that those who attacked the United States on 9-11 uh, paid a price and that uh, we uh, prevented terrorism uh, from taking place. And, you know, I was watching a special um, with uh, Ambassador Rice, and I, I, I agree with her to the extent of we are safer today than we were 20 years ago. No, things have changed. The Taliban may, you know, be organizing, but it's not the same as it was 20 years ago. And I think, you know, for many of us, we have to remember the circumstance at 9-11. I say this often. Um, you know, I, I may not have agreed with everything that President Bush did or stood for, but when we were attacked as a country, we came together. The, then President Bush asked us as a country to unite behind our service members and to protect our country's interest, and we did that. Now, 20 years later, President Biden is ending the war, and instead of coming together, supporting our troops, and bringing unity, uh, unfortunately, in Congress, we had more people casting aspersions against this president, even though the policy to, to end the war in Afghanistan and to even negotiate in, in some respects with the Taliban, you know, was started by the previous administration. So, again, we'll have plenty of time to come back and have congressional reviews about all of that and four presidents and 20 years of, of decision making. But right now, we need to uh, support our service members. I want to thank every single service member, active duty, uh, veteran, uh, who had any role over the last 20 years. You did your job. Uh, we thank you for your service to our country, and we thank you for protecting our freedom and our interest. Um, couldn't agree with you more. Um, one of the phrases that's been thrown around um, over the last few weeks as well is the phrase military industrial complex. What does that mean to you when you hear that phrase? Well, you know, I am proud now to be on the Armed Services Committee, and my district is home to four military installations, Nellis Air Force Base, Creech Air Force Base. I have Hawthorne Army Depot as well as the Nevada Test and Training Range. Um, and so what it means to me is uh, men and women, uh, service members, and their families who um, have put themselves up for service and who are being trained at the highest levels to protect our national security domestically and abroad. Um, and as I have spent time meeting with those service members and their family, as well as the commanders at the bases, I've learned um, that we play a critical role in Nevada, uh, our military installations do, and, and the people uh, who, who serve there. And that is why I am so proud to be able to be uh, the sole member from the House on the on Armed Services Committee from Nevada to be able to bring their issues forward. You know, yeah, I advocate for the needs of those bases, but I also uh, was successful in securing $20 million for a new dormitory uh, at Nellis, $2 million for a child care center uh, to be built uh, just off, off the base at, at Creech Air Force Base. We're addressing mental health issues on all of our bases, as well as sexual harassment and assault, um, and addressing justice reform throughout the military. So 
Uh, we need to hold the military and the Defense Department accountable, but we always need to support our men and women who uh, serve us honorably uh, in the military and their families. I can't underscore the importance of family members in uh, the service of our uh, military to our country. Um, as you know, I'm sure, because it's, everybody's been talking about it here and across the country, uh, Mark Milley's uh, telephone conversation with his counterpart in China mm -hmm. uh, that was revealed in the uh, Bob Woodward, Robert Costas book recently. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? I haven't read the book. I saw a short interview. Um, I, I'm sure we're going to have a congressional hearing on that, so I'm going to leave that uh, to another day. Um, but what I will say is that uh, General Miley Milley and, and the entire uh, d d Defense Department under Secretary Lloyd Austin are people with uh, the utmost uh, credibility, integrity, respect uh, for our service members, our country, and our national interest. Um, and, you know, whatever happened in the prior administration, we have congressional committees that are uh, currently doing investigations of that. And so, you know, I don't want to prejudge any of that until I receive all the facts. All right, let's take a break. More with Congressman Horsford after this timeout. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, season two, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation from Washington, D.C. with Congressman Stephen Horsford of CD4. Um, part of your backstory um, is the tragedy you endured as a youth. Your father was shot and killed when you were 19 and you almost lost your mom who struggled with drug addiction before she became sober 26 years ago. Um, I bring this up because it pertains to you and other members of the Congressional Black Caucus who are pushing for investments in youth of color through the Break the Cycle of Violence Act. Uh, the bill comes with a $6.5 billion total to finance community programming, violence prevention and workforce development. Um, it's got to come through your committee on House Ways and Means. Um, tell us about this bill and, and, and obviously why it's so important to you. Well, I'm really proud to be uh, the lead sponsor of this bill along with several of my colleagues, including Senator, Senator Cory Booker, um, Lisa Blunt Rochester, Lucy McBath, uh, and, and countless others. Uh, and yeah, it, it does come from a sense of my own personal experience dealing with violence, particularly gun violence. Uh, I was a freshman in college at the University of Nevada, Reno, when I got the call that my father had been shot um, and on his way to being transported to the hospital, died. Um, I never had the chance to say goodbye or to tell him I love him, let alone to have the opportunity for him to see me start my family, get married, have three kids, uh, go on to public service, and, and now serve in Congress. Uh, but my story, sadly, is... Um, 
you know, not the only one. A lot of people in my district in Nevada and across the country have been impacted by the trauma of violence, particularly gun violence. And so the Break the Cycle of Violence Act is, is just that, to break the cycle. Um, why is this so important? We've actually seen an uptick. 2020 had the highest rate of uh, homicide um, that year and one of the highest ever. Um, and we're on track to see that increase. So the status quo is not working. My bill uh, does come with $6.5 billion worth of funding over eight years. But what it's really a, about is prevention and inter intervention of violence, particularly gun violence. And all of the research, all of the best practice shows that when you provide, first of all, hope and opportunity to young people, uh, you can prevent those uh, incident, incidents of violence and gun violence uh, from occurring. And even when they happen, there are strategies, proven strategies that can prevent retaliation, prevent people from continuing on that track of, of violence in their own life or in their family and in their community. And so our bill is all about disrupting that violence. And, and it really is about breaking the cycle. So it actually has now been marked up. It is included in the break, uh, the, the Build Back Better Act, uh, the president's budget. We have the support of President Biden, of my colleagues here in the House. Senator Booker's working it on the Senate side. And I'm optimistic that by uh, the end of this year, we're going to have this bill signed by the president. All right. What, what kind of opposition are you seeing? There is no opposition because it's, it's one of these bills that actually does what we say it, it is intended to do, which is to break the cycle of violence. So we have the support of faith-based organizations, um, mental health uh, providers, uh, youth organizations that work with uh, youth, particularly 16 to 24-year-olds, um, support from law enforcement because they understand that the status quo uh, in gun violence in our communities in rural and urban areas is on the rise. And unless we have new strategies that are proven to work, then their job's going to be made even harder. And so uh, we don't have uh, a lot of opposition. The only issue really is making sure that we are able to uh, get it included in either the package of the budget, the Build Back Better Act, or as a standalone bill uh, before the end of this Congress. And we'll be back with Congressman Horsewood right after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Are you a homeowner who's interested in remodeling or building a home? At Design Outdoor, we can show you how adding natural or manufactured masonry stone can add beauty and value to your home. And we refer only the best contractors. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community, Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you, University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, Compassion, Accountability, Integrity, Respect. The Nevada Mining Association, mining a better future for Nevada, and NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Stephen Horsford of CD4. So we've already seen trillions of dollars poured into the economy. We are looking at potentially trillions of dollars more going into this economy. I spoke with Congressman Amade earlier, um, and we talked about, even though the interest rates are near zero right now, 
the interest rates on this debt are going to rise over time. What are your concerns? I mean, we all know, I mean, it's great when there's all this money to be able to spend on all these different projects, but the bill is going to come due. What are your concerns mm -hmm. from a fiscal point of view? Well, as you know, in addition to armed services, I'm also a member of Ways and Means and That's the Budget why I bring Committee. This up. <laughs> so uh, we, we've been knee deep in all of these uh, decisions. And um, what, what I'll start by saying, Sam, is, is look, we're in the middle of um, an unprecedented pandemic. We're still in the middle of it. Um, my priorities at the beginning of this Congress were about crushing the virus, getting our economy back on track, and restoring public comp confidence in our, in our democracy uh, and our institutions, our public institutions. Um, and so uh, under the, the prior administration, we did work to pass historic legislation, the CARES Act 1 and 2, to provide some immediate relief to address um, frontline support to address COVID and to get more testing and PPE and help with the uh, research for the development of, that, of a vaccine. That was all the right thing to do. And when President Biden came in, uh, he outlined uh, the uh, legislation that we needed on the American Rescue Plan, which has provided billions of dollars of support to small businesses. I, more than 40,000 small businesses in my district alone received a Paycheck Protection Program grant from the SBA that kept their businesses open and people employed. Uh, we were able to obviously uh, provide the child tax credit, which is really a tax cut for middle class families, uh, providing them $3,000 per child, uh, really to cover essential services of, of you know, raising a, a child. And we were also able to provide important relief on housing, on food assistance to support seniors and veterans and our most vulnerable citizens. That was a historic package, one of the biggest ever passed by Congress because we are dealing with a crisis. Now we are pivoting to recovery and the Build Back Better Act along with our infrastructure bill, both of which I support. Why? Because it's about making sure that, as I said, crush the virus, get our economy back on track. And no state was hit harder uh, than Nevada uh, back in 2020 when we had some of the highest unemployment in the nation. And particularly among women and people of color who were disproportionately affected, not only by COVID-19, but also by the recession. So my job is to make sure that these resources that are being passed here in Congress actually get to people back home. Uh, yeah, we have the responsibility to uh, pay our bills. Uh, we're going to be voting on the debt ceiling uh, to make sure that we do that. And that's debt that was incurred by prior administrations, um, as well as the debt that we are incurring because of the investments that we're making. But here's the last thing I'll just say on this. When Republicans were in control of the White House, the Senate, and the House, their number one priority was to give tax cuts to big corporations and the very wealthy. They did that, and they, they didn't pay for it. Now Democrats under President Biden are in charge of the Senate and the House. We pass the Build Back Better Act, which invests in middle class families, in children, in seniors, in working people, in small businesses, and we pay for it. Our bill is paid for 100 percent. So but we're I, not. I'm just going to stop you for a second. Yep. Because you know that every time a major bill is passed, whether it's billions or trillions, it's always said that it's going to be paid for, mm -hmm. and yet rarely has been. And that, that is the concern that we're moving into um, funding um, that is from cradle to grave. So let me tell you how we pay for it. One of the provisions in the Build Back Better Act will allow Medicare to finally be able to negotiate for lower priced prescription drugs. We take the savings from those 40% cut in cost in, in prescription drugs, and we invest them by providing expanded vision, hearing, and dental for Medicare recipients who currently don't have it unless they're on an Advantage plan. Um, so this bill is paid for. Uh, we uh, adjust taxes on the very wealthy and big corporations so that they pay their fair share. Not putting anybody out of business, we actually cut the rate for small businesses from 21% to 18%. Uh, 
Um, and if your business is between 400,000 and 5 million, there is no change in the rate. They, and that is an important point because I think a lot of times uh, certain people on the other side will talk about uh, raising taxes. We're talking about the very wealthy, big corporations, some of whom did not pay any federal tax in prior years. Why is it okay for a big corporation not to pay their fair share like every other middle class family in America? Well, I am immediately going to invite you to come back again very <laughs> soon because there are counterpoints to what you're saying, and, and I'd love to be able to have more time to be able to discuss them with you. But for now, um, you get the last word, and, and I always appreciate You've been doing this show a long time. I think I have interviews with you going back to 2005. When I wasn't so gray. But, <laughs> or <you know>. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always appreciate coming on. I know these are complicated issues. Uh, we'd love to ha be back on to, to share more. But I just want people to know in my district and all across Nevada, you know, my job is to represent Nevada, to deliver for our families, our small businesses, our children. Uh, people won't always agree with me 100%, but I hope they always know that I have uh, their best interests at heart and we're always going to fight to do what's right for them. And we'll always be looking to have you back on the program. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tim. And we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Stay tuned for the latest news from Washington, D.C. and Nevada right here on Nevada Newsmakers. We'll see you on the next show.